here we will discuss the concept of slack and float we have uh, already done the event based analysis and uh, activity based analysis of a project and uh, that is appearing in the network diagram here you see that in this project there are activities a b c up to l and uh, they are related with each other in such a way that this activity on arrow network diagram represents their relationship and uh, in previous videos you have seen how we can do the event based analysis like finding the earliest time and latest time at all these nodes similarly we have done activity based analysis also where we have found earliest start time earliest finish time latest start time latest finish time of various activities in fact that is shown in this slide where for all the activities from a to l we have the four different times computed now you find on this network diagram that for various nodes like say node number 1 node number 3 node number 5 and node number 9 the earliest time and latest time are same that is here on node 3 you notice that earliest time is 23 and latest time is also 23 but for other nodes like say take node 8 earliest time is 51 while the latest time is 56 so wherever you find that there is a gap between earliest time and latest time it indicates that on that node you can reach earliest by that time like say for node 8 you can reach earliest by 51 days but even if you reach there by 56 days your project is not getting delayed it means that for node 8 you have 5 days extra this is called slack so for all the nodes where earliest time and latest times are same they are actually on critical path and the slack time for them is zero but for rest of the activities where the latest time is higher than the earliest time the difference between the two gives us the slack time slack generally we relate with uh, nodes or events in a analysis so slack time of any event can be computed by subtracting earliest time from latest time of that event now we talk about float which is based on activity based analysis here we see for the same project that for various activities we have computed earliest start time earliest finish time latest start time and latest finish time say for activity a the earliest start time is 0 but latest start time is 3 so at a start we have 3 days extra we can compute float using the start time or finish time that is either we can compute latest start time minus earliest start time or we can compute latest finish time minus earliest finish time this is telling us how much buffer we have in terms of time in start or end of the activity this is called float or total float so total fo float for an activity 
can be computed either by taking LST that is latest start time minus earliest start time or it can be taken by subtracting earliest earliest finish time from latest finish time this is giving us the extra time which we have for that so this is called float or total float but for various situations some other type of float are useful for example if the situation is such that in this activity we can't delay to such an extent that the earliest start of the subsequent activity is disturbed then in that case we have a restriction that this activity cannot go beyond the earliest time of the next uh, event this kind of float is called free float so let us see this in more detail with the data free float means that the subsequent activity earliest start time should not be disturbed by this activity so let us take an example of say activity uh, j now activity j if we look into this detail the earliest start time is 15 and latest start time is 26 means 26 minus 15 11 days we have as total float for activity j but when we look into the free float the free float is somewhat restricted in the sense that latest start time of the subsequent activity sorry earliest start time of the subsequent activity should not be disturbed so look at k k starts at 41 that is node 7 earliest time is 41 it means that for free float j cannot continue beyond 41 that is earliest start time of k should not be disturbed so now you find that activity j can be earliest started at time 15 it can go at the most up to 41 it means 41 minus 15 that is total uh, 26 days are available only because beyond 41 it can't go even though the latest time for node 7 is 46 but since earliest start time of node or activity k cannot be disturbed so now practically for j uh, the latest time by which it must be finished is 41 only for the computation of free float we are doing this so 41 minus 15 that gives you 26 days and since 20 days is anyway required for doing this activity so 26 minus 20 that will give you the free float it means for free float calculation we'll have to we'll have to take the earliest time of the node where this activity is ending that is 41 from there we have to subtract the earliest time of the node where that activity is starting and then whatever is there from that we have to subtract the activity time that gives the free float take it as if free float is used in such kind of situation where the subsequent activity department puts a lot of pressure on this activity that because of this activity their start should not be disturbed their start should happen at the earliest start time itself so if that kind of pressure is there we will have to use free float so free float of activity AIJ I am just using the symbol here that activity AIJ means such activity which is starting from node i and ending at node j 
to compute that we will have to take the earliest time of node j where that activity is ending because that is actually telling us about the earliest start time of subsequent activities and we just can't go beyond that so earliest time of the node where this activity is ending minus earliest time of node where the activity is starting because that gives us the earliest start time of the activity so this is telling us about the total duration which can be made available for the activity uh, provided we uh, don't allow the delay of the subsequent activity start so this is the total duration available from that we need to subtract the activity time this tij is representing the activity time so this gives us the extra time which we have available provided the next activity earliest start time is not disturbed so this gives us the free float though various float terms have been introduced in various uh, study materials but for practical purposes while managing a project related to activities this free float and total float these two are very commonly used so we end the discussion on slack and float here